Hello, I'm host Eric. I'm host talking with famous people. We're talking tonight with famous person Yubi about life priorities. Yubi self identifies as both an INTP and an atypical INTP in a lot of ways. He talks about the fact that he had a business, sold it, and chose to minimize or minimalize one, his life in some ways in order to be a more happy human being. So let's go back and get a little bit of autobiography from you, Yubi. Start back when you are you are 16 years old, you're sitting in English class, you're looking out the window, tell us what's going on, and proceed there from there through to the current times, or until I interrupt you. Um, well, wow, that's, that's early. Okay, I mean, in high school, I was I was incredibly active, which I don't know if that's a common thing for NTPs or not, but like, I was, I played a bunch of sports. I've played basically everything. In high school, I ran track and cross country, and I've raced motocross my entire life. And then, so I was doing that in high school. I made good grades. I didn't make all A's, but I just did what I needed to to get by, like, and made, like, made mostly A's, B's, and C's, really. Just kind of, I think I graduated with, like, 3.0. I don't remember. But anyways, I was working all through high school, or, or like, I think my, I started working when I was 15 at a restaurant. I quickly moved up in the restaurant to where I was a manager by 17 years old and was making pretty good money for 17. I had bought my own, like, I bought a motorcycle, had a truck, was doing really well. Then that same guy that owned that restaurant, him and I got really close. He was an ENTP, by the way, an entrepreneur. And him and I were really close, and we were just... We had really good ideas all the time, and we just decided to create stuff together. So we came up with this marketing company idea while I was going to college and getting in the process of getting my marketing degree. And we started it, and it worked, like, well. Um, and so I ran that. I was COO of that company. He put up most of the money because he had it. Um, and... We did well for about a year and a half, two years with that, and then all of a sudden, the truth is, I kind of got into some more metaphysical stuff, like my studies, mostly I was just reading things on physics and um, just more hard sciences, that's what I was into in high school, and then I slowly, the more I studied the hard sciences, I couldn't help but kind of slip into some more metaphysical stuff, and uh, I honestly had an experience that kind of changed my life, and I sold the business, quit my job. So did you sell uh, it to the ENTP, or did he buy you out, or what? No, we both agreed to sell it. He had, dude, he has like six other businesses that he's doing right. all at the same time, so like right. he doesn't care. That one made money, so he's like, okay, I can let that go. It's cool, because he, he was still making tons of money from all his other outlets. So he was a busy fucking man. Is but he, is he any, dead, or anyways, what? No, no. I mean, I don't talk to him that much anymore, but we're still good. If I call him up, we totally, like, have a conversation. No, I mean, there's no hard feelings of me. He totally understood. Like, I told him my true feelings, and he was like, dude, do what you got to do in your freaking life. Like, thank you. Our well, teamwork this, was badass. This is particularly interesting to me because, you know, I I have various uh, – I have a similar – it might be a similar approach. I try to find one other person to team up with with every – Every business idea, basically. I, yeah. I don't have that set up right now. Certainly not with um, with my debate business. I have just me and, and some satellite people that are kind of poorly defined. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, that's that's the model here with this. I had to find them and bring them on to be a partner. You know, find Zachary, Zachary revealed himself to be a partner in this. So I've got several things like that going on too. And it's interesting to me and gla I'm gratifying to me to know that the INTP, ENTP business relationship worked out, you know? Because uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm, I think I'm it, still it was getting, super just getting started in yeah, all this shit I, myself. I haven't been at it for, for long. So I'm sorry to yeah. have interrupted your story. Please continue. No, I, I think it was super effective. Just I'll comment very, real quick on that, the business relationship. We, we never had... Um, problems with each other and if we did they got worked out so quickly you know like we didn't have any drama it was so because we were just direct honest with each other work shit out if there was a problem and 
we concentrated so much on the architecture and design of the plan before we launched it that when it launched it, the execution was fucking perfect because it was already all done in our heads. Like, it was so good. So anyways, that was, See, my that's first that. relationship with an INTP in a business capacity was bad in that exact capacity. She was very practical and was like, well, look, we don't have... We shouldn't invest money we have. we're not making yet in in making sure this architecture is right before launching because we are time constraints stuff. And there were time constraints and there were time pressures and there were money pressures, but I wanted to fucking put everything off until I get all the the uh, internet architecture in place to facilitate everything else we do. Yeah. yeah I gotcha. Uh, anyway, that's another me branching about something irrelevant. Okay, so Irrelevant, yep. but not, but not, not part of your story. So let's proceed with your story. You changed that business. You were like, okay, fuck this. I'm tired of being um, prioritizing work and financial outcomes for the time being. I'd like to focus on myself. And you engaged in what you call it a period of of low skill work plus self development, or what? Yeah, it was it was low skill work, easy hours for the most part. Reduced a lot of my like, I almost didn't have any friends. I mean, I had, like, one good friend that I... Like, I also moved cities, by the way, and I sold all my things. Like, almost everything. Sold my motorcycle, like, sold everything and moved. That's an INTP uh, thing right there. That yeah, sounds like and, an INTP. And so I got the crappy, kind of crappy job, uh, but it was fun in some way. And then... Yeah, just focus on myself. I read a shit ton of everything metaphysical I could get my hands on. Uh, Buddhist magazine. text, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bible. I mean, I literally just crammed information into my head, metaphysical, and then just turned them. And I was also practicing meditation and yoga. I had just gotten into this stuff, and I had some experience. Is, that seriously changed my that changed my life. Like completely made me redirect my. Now I still care about money, of course, because you have to survive. But survival is not, I guess, would, it's not my prime directive anymore. You know, like, so many people go through life and you're constantly trying to survive. Like, you know, money, job. That is your. That's if you really think about it. What are you thinking about most of your day? For most people, they would answer. You know, my job, my family, like taking care of my family, like getting this done, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's crazy to me. <laughs> You're like, that sucks. That's a shitty, that's a shitty quality of life. And I wanted to improve my quality of life. So that is what I focused on, was myself, true happiness. So can I be happy with nothing? If I sell all my things and I get used to that, can I be truly happy? So then when I go back out in the world and I start getting things again I'm not so attached to them like they don't those aren't the things that are giving me the happiness I'm just happiness I am happiness like I I'm good every day just fucking being alive well, I mean I I understand the appeal of that philosophy in general and I understand that some types are, are quite given to attachment to objects and stuff that they think they need they don't really need uh there's different kinds of attachments that people have. So, I have a lot of crap around here, but the only objects I care about are the ones I use to do things. So, I care about the laptop only insofar as it continues to work, at which point I'll throw it away yeah, and get another utility. one, you know? I care about the drums that are here that aren't mine, but they're here because they allow me to play the drums. Otherwise, I wouldn't have any drums. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. So. I care about objects in that regard. I care about my being free to do what I want to do, like you're saying, right? But I don't think being free to do what you want to do necessi necessitates you uh, being minimalist in terms of possessions or resources. No, I think it, it I means either. having as many resources as possible so you can liberate yourself to do as much as you feel like doing however you want to do it. So if it weren't for resources, what I wanted to do was fly Zach out and make some episodes together when I went to Utah. If I had no resources, I wouldn't be able to do it. That That is counter to Buddhism, in my mind. Because to tell me that somehow there was something that was anything less than spiritually perfect about being able to do that for me is inaccurate. 
Yeah, I mean, Buddhism in the sense that we're, like, the strict, like, I don't, that's not what I was after in reading Buddhism. It was, it was more about the understandings of just, of this, like, what they call the self, the universe, the self, the being, like, it was more of, you know, part of all this was, too, I want to find out who I am. I think every person inherently wants to know who they are, like, that's why we're studying this typing stuff, is You're you Yubi. want to know more about yourself. You're Yubi. <clears throat> how, um, old you? how old is Yubi? How old is Yubi? Somebody wants 25. to know. 25. 25? Yes. Ah, oh, so young. Wow. I thought you were a little bit older than that. Um, huh. that I mean, that's and this is the reality I encounter all the time. People's ages have very little to do with how competent, capable, intelligent, yeah, realized individuals are. You know, they have almost nothing to do with it. I've, I've got some... It stands for uh, You Bitch 99 uh, Killers <laughs> with a Z at the end. It's his gaming name. Okay, so... Uh, anyway... Um, this issue of attachment, I think different types attach to different things, right? So, I think if you're an ENTJ or an ENFJ, you're going to attach to actual wealth and objects and stuff like that and be attached to your car and be like oh it's cool I've got a fanciest car you know if you are an INTP I think you get too attached to specific ideas or sets of words like when I attack an idea like Buddhism attachment notion you immediately say something like well I'm not that wasn't the thing I was going for I don't freaking care <laughs> you know it's like I'm not talking about what you thought or you said I'm like this is what's wrong with attachment in Buddhism you know Okay, and, but and let's so, keep it in context. We're having a conversation where about my, like, you, you sure, t labeled correct. it my story or whatever, so correct. I'm speaking about myself, and then correct. you go off on a branch about, so I'm just, I'm just ensuring that that branch, making sure that that branch doesn't associate with me, because it doesn't. Your okay. train of thought did not, that's okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> Correct, and I understand the urge to do that, and I think that's a, a good urge, and it's good that you indulge that urge to do that, and I wasn't critical of that. What I'm saying is that this is an example of the INTP's kind of attachment versus an ENTP's kind of attachment. I'm riffing off of the topic that we're, we, we're getting into here about your own experience choosing to engage in a process of minimalization. So at this point, I would like to additionally talk about the process of minimalization ex extracted from you and say that each individual type of personality is prone towards certain kinds of attachment and unfortunately what I did there was start with INTP so it makes it sound like it's uh, an attack on INTP attachment. INTPs get attached to shit like drugs and alcohol and playing and this. I'm so addicted to talking to fans people. I, I, I yeah. just I'm completely addicted to it. I get what you're saying, but there are tons of types attached to drugs and alcohol, and I don't. I don't agree. To money I disagree with that. I, I disagree with that entirely. I do not think there are tons of types of addicted to drugs and alcohol. I think most of the people addicted to drugs and alcohol are going to be extroverted perceivers. I don't. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe if you did a study, and maybe the general, like, maybe there would be a higher percentage, but you would find that those of all types in that study. Okay, well, I've never that seen an INTJ in an AA meeting. Dude, are you kidding me? Over, like, dwelling, or over, what is it, when they, they fucking engage in SE way too much? I've I never seen, I have been, but here's drinking. the problem here. Yeah, I'm giving you a specific piece of evidence. I've been to a lot of AA meetings, and I've noticed that I go to AA meetings, I haven't been to one in a long time, but I've been to a lot of them. I notice the personalities of people in those places. I and you get a sense of who they are. I know what INTJs act like. I know what kind of personalities they type, and I see a lot of similar personality types in those rooms. Okay, it's a lot of ENTPs. Not not so many ENTPs, but a lot of ESTPs. Shitloads of them. You know, there's ISTPs. Maybe I don't know about ISTPs or not, but there's there's like STs are are highly represented. SFs are highly represented in certain certain kinds of SFs, like uh, ESFP might be in there as well. But they get addicted to different things, too. Like, you know, ESTPs, ENTPs, they get addicted to stimulants and alcohol. Everybody gets addicted to alcohol. 
because alcohol works on multiple planes. That's the reason why alcohol is so bad. Alcohol makes your body feel good. It takes away your fear, so it works on an emotional level. It can make you more successful socially if you if you're not a drunk. Uh, it works on an extroverted feeling level. It uh, makes you stop worrying about your schedules and shit. Solves your SI problems for the moment. You know, makes you indulge in uh, actual possibility, this possibility or that possibility, rather than getting lost in them. So it contains your NE. It probably makes your NI truths feel super true. I don't know. It like it hits you on all levels. Alcohol is a, a bad one, but in general, I will tell you there are certain types that are more prone to addiction than others. It's at least as verifiable and verified a statement as yours that there's you'll see also different types. There's no reason to conclude that any more than my statements. Oh, I mean, okay, I agree with that, but at the same time, <laughs> we, I, it's just like I guess I hate those general statements because. It's like with this typing stuff, when you read things online or like all these descriptions that get so generalized and then it it pulls away from the accuracy of Okay, of you're the an thing INTP. Like, you're an INTP. No. Your focus on details like this is what pulls away from accuracy. It's the ENTP's mechanism focus, it's a stronger way of arguing and stronger way of thinking of things in general. Okay? I'm just telling you this because I'm so tired of fucking INTPs and their little empiric shit. Empirics don't matter if the logic sound. <laughs> this this is a point of dispute, right? This is an inter quadra battle here. You guys are the log logicians, the type or the intuitives of the quadra. So we're gonna have this fight. Empirics don't matter if the logic is sound. Right. I don't because you're not understanding things in terms of mechanism <laughs> adequately. You're not understanding things in terms of mechanism. You have no meta framework to manage all your different frameworks. You think that's what different frameworks logically sound that you can build one big fucking framework to contain everything. It doesn't work. Trust me. I mean, need to be. I know this shit. I just, I, I don't, I don't, I just, you're rambling off on something that you think I think. That's that's what's crazy to me. Like you go on assumptions and you're going off branch. You just keep branching off, like branch, branch, branch. And you branch, keep branch. demonstrating my point. Saying, and you wait, keep whoa, demonstrating whoa. everything I'm saying is true. Me. You keep demonstrating the truth of my words. What do you mean? How? How is that? The, the fact that you're calling into account these the arguments I'm making based on the vectors in which you're calling them into account, the argumentation style you're utilizing, the focus on relativism, the uh, it's called the INTP way. It's called debating like water. Well, I'm here to tell you what's wrong with it. And I am a debate coach, so I'm not just fucking like, I'm just going to fuck with you and just tell you you're wrong for no reason. Don't debate like that, you know? There's no reason to be to feel like everything has to fit into a single framework. You've got to be able to balance between them. So, yes, you do think that. I can tell by how you're arguing and what the words you're saying here. You're saying, let's evaluate it through this framework. You're assuming I'm saying things. Well, no, I'm saying your behavior is demonstrating the following cognitive behavior, co cognitive functions. It's demonstrating the, co the following cognitive habits, and they're consistent with my experience with INTPs as debaters. So that's that's how it goes. I mean, I guess we can say that's how it goes and believe it if we want. I mean, that's cool. You can say things like that. That doesn't mean it's true. That's true. <laughs> so how do we determine the truth, though? That's the point, so though. How do we determine the truth? Who's right and who's wrong? Who's right and who's wrong, Yubi? Who's but, right about what's inside your you head, see, me or you? <laughs> no, but you see, it's you're arguing for a right and wrong. You're arguing a side. Right. I, there are no sides. I'm Except your relativism is wrong. No, there are sides. There are certain things that are true and certain things that are not true. There are right and yes, wrong but answers. But I don't give weight to either side. I'm not giving weight to one over the other. It doesn't. I'm who cares? You keep trying, bringing it back like, to yourself. So you, but you keep bringing it back to yourself. I know this is about you. I know this video is all about you and it's an interview of you, but you need to stop bringing oh, it back man, to yourself that's... because what I'm saying is these things are not about you're taking a side. It's about which st statements ought to be affirmed and which statements ought to be rejected. It's not about you or me or anybody else. Yeah, I, okay. I mean, I, I don't. I didn't think I was trying to make it about me, but if we need to... <laughs> you be. What I'm saying is debate like this. You know, look, the relativism is not going like to fly. The rel yeah, relativism yeah. doesn't fly. That's the point. Relativism is not a good answer. You're saying that everything's mush is not a good answer. There are right answers and wrong answers to things. 
Explain. Prefer mush. Tell me why you prefer mush. I don't prefer mush. I, I'm not. I'm just not sure what you're arguing right now. Like I don't know what your claim is. I I okay, prefer well, mush. Let's go back I put to everything it. into one giant framework, and that's. I mean, I just these are all really big assumptions that I don't. <laughs> I'm right, sorry. Well, you that you, I issued, just don't a, agree you with. issued a critique saying this: that when we make general statements about INTPs, ENTPs, and how they think. When we make general statements about how the cognitive functions play out inside their heads, that those statements are necessarily false, that you don't even believe there is a position statement to be claimed there one way or the other, that you're certainly not claiming a position statement, and that, in fact, there's no real clear answer like that one way or the other. I'm telling you, you're wrong, you're wrong, uh, okay on that other one, and then you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't honestly I don't even remember what there wasn't a clear answer on if we could get back to the original point the original discussion instead of arguing <laughs> theoretics about how people uh, argue you just said you don't know what we were talking about and I just recapped it for you right no, you recapped the argument yeah you re yes exactly right. you because you said you don't know what we're arguing about so what else am I going to recap my fucking trip to the supermarket but do you see this is yeah this is what I'm talking about this is an ENTP argument you get into an argument with an ENTP they create all these branches and then the SI is so fucking loosely like put together that you can't even you don't even know what you're talking about you just end up branching off into random points that do not fucking connect and correlate to anything in reality. Like, and, and, look, and, look, and listen to this INTP ontological violence. Like someone should have to know what they're talking about to talk about it. Come on now. There, there is something I'm confused about. Uh-huh. Uh, host Eric, you were saying that real system is a bad argument, but you're also saying that there are a bunch of different frameworks. And right. so I'm kind of confused about having both of those at the same time. Okay, that's a good question. And the answer is the meta framework is designed specifically to eliminate relativism by determining when and which framework is applicable and when and which circumstance. Absolutely. So, for example, if I'm advocating okay, a position so statement that it proposes coercion against others, it's going to be applicable under a certain framework, whereas I'm, I'm providing, if, if I'm ab making a position statement saying, I like to stab my hand with uh, with a pencil, then that's a different sort of thing, you know? Okay, so in addition to all the, the individual frameworks, there's a meta framework that you that sort manages the other frameworks. That manages the other frameworks. Okay. So one, one of those frameworks is okay. definitely argumentation. You know, it's like... Okay. Okay, well, this is how we should argue. <laughs> but, I mean, I understand other people don't agree with those frameworks, but they're they're logically consistent with each other, and they're well-warranted. And so, it, even though it might sound like, even though, like, in this one, I start getting a little, like, trolly at a certain point. I don't know why. It's insane, but I do, and I just sort of start rolling with it. Um, but uh, I do actually know exactly what I'm talking about, and I am correct about the relativism point. Your frameworks... Uh, to, to think that there are no clear answers to things is appalling. <laughs> My thoughts on now, that. The, I don't know I when I said there wasn't a clear answer to I something. I didn't say That's you said I'm... that. I said to think that. But, okay. But, oh, wow. But you did say that to me, like, not even five minutes ago. Like, you did what say... What did I say, though? Why, is, why do you prefer mush? Why, okay. why can't you know? Right, that was a question. That, I, hey, hey, me. hey, listen, I didn't make a claim there. I asked a question. Claims are subject to certain kinds of responses, and questions are subject to other kinds of responses. Okay, okay, so let's, let's look at the way people interpret communication and language. You can, re you can remove yourself from FE and FI, like your intentions, but when you pr produce a certain sentence, like directed at someone, you say, why do you look at mush, and all the emotional content involved. What does it l seem like you are saying to someone? What is it? Like, yes, you can try and pull a innocent out I, of I'm not, the moment. This is the problem. This is the problem. Gone. This is the problem. I'm not saying something to someone. 
I'm making an argument about an argument. I get what you're saying. I get that. I get we were talking about an argument, argumentation, arguing right, look, about argumentation. Look, here's basically. the thing people right. don't understand is that every time you make a statement in life, you're making an argument. Most statements don't need to be argued about or disputed much, okay? Um, like if I say, I'm going to light this cigarette right now, it will either be proved true or not, and it depends on your definition of, of right now and whatever else, right? It doesn't matter. But anytime you make a statement, you're making a claim. And claims come with a burden. He who makes the claim has a burden to prove it. So as I walk around the world, I see trashy claims being thrown all over the place. And I try to resist to to spit on them, you know? Because unfortunately people don't understand that. They don't understand that when they say um, when they say, You forgot to take out the trash, they're making a claim. And they have a burden, and they've got a framework they got to wrestle with, and all that kind of shit, you know. So when I when I when I make statements like this, you'll be I am not attacking you, though it sounds like I am. And I'm sure every viewer out there is saying, Eric, you are being such a fucking asshole. Next video, thank you, Callum. You are my timekeeper. Uh, I appreciate that. I need that. I need somebody to call time on me. Thanks for watching, time with fans, people. Uh, You'll be and I'll figure it out, I'm sure. How did we get all into that? All right.